In this video, we're going to work on making time speed charts, and in doing so, understand exactly what acceleration means. Our problem says a bicyclist, initially at rest, steadily speeds up at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. Alright, so let's go ahead and start by drawing a time speed chart. Just like a stopwatch, we're going to always start our time at zero seconds. So at the initial time, so when the bicyclist is right here, we can tell her foot's on the ground, there's no motion lines behind her, she's not moving. Also the promise is at rest, so our speed is zero. This two meters per second squared, that's going to be our acceleration. And acceleration is the change in speed each second. So what this two meters per second squared really means is that each second, bicyclist speed is changing, in this case increasing, by 2 meters per second. The fact that we have seconds in there twice is why the units on acceleration are seconds squared. Alright, so that means after one second, the speed is 2 meters per second. Our first question asks us, what is her speed after two seconds? So after two seconds, we'll continue to increase by two meters per second every second and get to four meters per second. Remember that in physics class, after really means at. All right, so then it says how long would it take her to reach a speed of 12 meters per second? Well, we'll just continue with our chart and keep counting that speed up by two meters per second. doing that, we see that, we'll, that the bicyclist will reach a speed of 12 meters per second after 6 seconds. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. This one says a bicyclist initially traveling 12 meters per second slows down at a uniform rate of 4 meters per second squared. So in this problem, when we start our problem, think about starting our stopwatch, so our time is zero, our speed is initially 12 meters per second. And this time, the speed is going to decrease at a rate of 4 meters per second each second. So after one second, she'll be traveling 8 meters per second, which is actually our first answer. After two seconds, 4 meters per second. The problem asks us when she stops, so we're waiting till our speed hits zero, which occurs at three seconds. In our next problem, it says a car initially traveling 30 miles per hour steadily speeds up to 48 miles per hour during a three second time interval. So this one's a little bit different for a couple reasons. The first is the units. So in this one when our time is zero, our speed is 30 miles per hour. And we see that we reach a speed of 48 miles per hour after three seconds. And it's my job to figure out, to fill these in, and figure out the acceleration. Well, we can actually use the definition of the numerical definition of acceleration, which says that acceleration equals the final speed minus the initial speed divided by time. I'm going to put parentheses around that to remind you if you type that into a calculator, make sure you put parentheses around it so it knows to divide last. So with my final speed of 48, minus my initial speed of 30, and my time of 3 seconds, I can go ahead and plug into that equation. 48 minus 30 is 18. That's how much the car actually um, increased in speed total. That occurred over 3 seconds. So if I divide 18 by 3, that gives me an acceleration of 6. Now the units on that 6 are going to be, well the speed was miles per hour, but the units are going to be miles per hour per second. This is a kind of a weird unit. It contains the units of time twice in the hours and seconds, but since those are different units we don't see a squared on there. So my units, or my magnitude of the car's acceleration were 6 miles per hour per second. Remember magnitude means put in a positive number. 
So no matter what, your answers on here are going to be positive. All right, so now I know the speed is increasing by six miles per hour every second. So I can just add six and make sure everything works out. So after one second, I'm at 36 miles per hour. After two seconds, 42 miles per hour. If I added six again, I'd get to 48 miles per hour. So I know I'm right. This is what was the car speed after or at one second, which would be 36 miles per hour. Our next question asks us to fill out a time speed distance chart. So our time will be measured in seconds, speed measured in meters per second, distance measured in meters, and acceleration in meters per second squared. So our problem says a bicyclist initially at rest speeds up with a uniform acceleration of 3 meters per second squared for 4 seconds. So 3 meters per second squared, I can just tell by the units, is going to be our acceleration. Initially at rest tells me that my speed starts at zero, and my speed will increase by three meters per second every second. So the speed, I can just count up by threes. Distance is a little bit tougher. So first, I know that the distance that she travels, uh, that she hasn't traveled any distance when the time is zero. So speed doesn't always start at zero, but our distance is going to start at zero in this case. All right. So then we want to figure out how far had she traveled after one second. So this is the one time that I like to use the equation. Distance equals initial speed times time plus one-half at squared. So I usually opt for the easier version of this, but in this problem it's advantageous to use this. So let's take a look at this. Our initial speed, no matter what, is going to be zero no matter what time we plug in for. Our acceleration is going to be three. For the f To figure out one second, I can plug in my initial speed of zero times my time of one plus one half times three, which is my acceleration, times my time again squared. So this first term, zero times one is just zero. Plugging in the rest of it, I am going to get 1.5 meters. The next one, I can do zero. I'm just going to replace my times of one with twos. So again, the first term cancels out. One half times three times two squared gives me a distance of six meters. I'll continue the pattern. This time plugging in three seconds for t. And if I do that, I get 13.5 meters. And lastly, plugging in four for t. I get 24 meters. You'll notice that with the distance, it increases, but, not in, but does not increase linearly. So that's why I do use, need to use that equation to figure that one out.